Neil Monroe stars as Quentin Nichols in The Case of the Missing Mourner with Sarah Ornstein and Peter Millard. Give it up, Brown. You're trapped now. I'm not behind for something I didn't do. And make your case at trial. My man's a dead shot. In the name of the Queen, drop the gun. Stay away, copper. Suit yourself. Can you take it out of his hand, Wellington? With my Winchester, maybe. Not with this Colt. Best I can do is an arm or shoulder. All right, you are. Let's end this foolishness. I'll distract him. Whatever you say. Brown! So, Chief Constable, now I'm to escort Foster Brown back to trial in beautiful London, Ontario, sir. Right, Nichols. And keep a sharp eye on him this time. Um, Yes, I'm sorry, sir. But we got him back, though a little worse for wear. That's another thing. The doctor doesn't want him to travel after taking that bullet in the shoulder. But the mayor of London wants him returned now. After all, one of his victims was a constable, and the municipal election is underway. Now, that lady doctor, your friend, would she... It's all I'm sure Dr. Lapierre will help me out, sir. There. I've changed the dressing, Mr. Brown. No sign of infection. Stay still. Get some sleep, and you'll feel better. Before long, I won't feel much. A quick trial and they'll hang me like a side of beef. I'm a bloody rag picker, not a killer. From what I understand, Mr. Brown, you were found standing over the dead constable and Mr. Dick, the second victim, with your gun in your hand. It wasn't my gun. It belonged to the gentleman who did the killing. I was having a nip in the park when I saw them arguing, Mr. Dick and the gentleman. I hears a pop and Dick goes down. Then the copper comes along, and come as you please, the gentleman says, Evening, constable, and shoots him between the eyes, drops the gun, and strolls off. I, I went to help, uh, and picked it up in case he come back. Well, the way they tell it, you tried to rob James Dick, killed him when he resisted, killed the constable when he tried to arrest you, and fled to Toronto. It wasn't me. It was that gentleman, the doctor. Doctor? Yes, I heard Mr. Dick call him doctor as they argued, said something like, I've seen her diary, doctor, so give her back the money or it's the courts for you. What did the police say about this? A drunken sod standing over a dead copper with a smoking gun, what do you think? Fancy Pants goes free and I get the rope. Do you believe me? A doctor who goes about shooting citizens and constables for sport, you'll have to do better than that, Brown. Now, uh, give me that wrist again. I'm so looking forward to breakfast with you in the morning. Pity if you weren't there. Ah, sleep tight. Come on, Abby. Two escape attempts. My bags are lost. And his wound is open again. <laughs> when does the fun start? Well, Brendan? there, there. And I'm sorry about this. But by tomorrow evening, he'll be in a London cell and we'll be at the theatre. Ah. I promise. And we'll find your bags. Now, why do I let you talk me into these things? Now, what if he's innocent? Look, if James Dick had gone off to confront some doctor over money owed, then there would jolly well be some record. Now, obviously, the police found nothing. So mark my words, he killed two people, and he'll swing long and high for it. A very pleasant image on which to sleep. Thank you, Inspector. Brown should be well enough to be executed within a month or two. Yes. But I've always hated formalities, you know, like like trials, Chief Bull. (laughs) Oh, he'll be tried, but there's little doubt that he did it. And nothing makes me madder than to see decent family men gunned down by a layabout like him. Yes, well, I'm sure you have things under control, even with so much election excitement about. Which brings me to another topic. Because of the election turmoil, I need every man here. Uh, but I also require someone to travel to Milltown, uh, to Elora, to discreetly check on a lady who may or may not be missing. <laughs> and since I'm with the Ontario Constabulary, you'd like me to do a circuitous route back to Toronto via Elora and find this woman. <laughs> Chief Constable Levin said you'd pick up the idea right away. Oh, you've spoken to him? Well, yes. So this isn't really a request? Well, no. Then I suppose uh, I'm delighted? Well, yes. 
At least he said you'd be, and uh, glad we are to have you. Yes, he's such a dear, isn't he? Now, uh, a few uh, details, sir, if you please. Uh, of course. Uh, her name is Mary Carling. She married into the very influential Carling family and owns a successful bakery operation in her own right. Uh, last week, she went to Milltown to explore having flour processed at the Alora Mill. It hasn't returned, and yet she's not registered there at any hotel. I'm sure she's just stopped off someplace, but uh, because of her family ties, I said we'd make immediate inquiries. Yes, of course. Uh, privilege of the financial aristocracy. When was she due back, sir? Four days ago, about the time of the murders. Oh, uh, I should mention one other thing. Her husband passed on in January, and she's still in mourning. Uh, not that she'd be distraught enough to do anything, but, uh, well, whoever knows, hmm? I see. Well, we'll uh, start back tomorrow. Yeah. I'll telegraph you from Alora and report. Oh, uh, did Brown tell you about this doctor? He claims shot those people. <laughs> Rubbish. A new yarn at every turn. Let's see what he tells the man in the hood just before he's sent to hell. Hmm? You'll love the Alora Gorge, Abby. I'm told it's exceptionally scenic this time of year. Oh, I don't know. It's a fair bit out of our way, and I do have patience to It'll see you. It'll just take an extra day or two. Oh, Lord Loverduck. <laughs> what is it? Taking a siesta under the tree, Wellington. Quick, let's head back before Inspector? it... Inspector! Uh... Abby! <laughs> what a surprise! Daniel! What are you doing here? I'm covering these uh, infernal elections. You? Uh, we transported Brown back here for trial, so uh, uh, good luck, Wellington. Off we go, Abby. Oh, oh, wait. This election is about as exciting as watching grass grow. Mm, we're actually leaving in the morning. Oh, perfect. So am I. I've hired a young fella to telephone me the election results for my Globe story. Yes, but we're not on a case. We're off to see the Alora Gorge. Oh, uh, the missing lady? What? How did you know about that? Chief Lemon. He said you were going to Alora after London and wouldn't be back for a week. Uh, when I told Chief Bull I was to meet you in Alora, well, he knows the part mm -hmm. I played in some of your adventures, so he was most forthcoming. I'm sure it was more than I've been told. Abby, the gorge is magnificent. So are your methods of manipulation. You'll be Inspector Nichols? Yes. I'm J.J. Barnett of the Commercial Hotel. Welcome to Alora. And are these your companions? Yes, uh, Dr. Lapierre and uh, Mr. Wellington. A pleasure. How do you? Well, I must say, this is uh, excellent service, sir. Thank you. But you might say I'm here in two capacities. As your host from the hotel and as the local constable. Ah, right. Well, have you learned anything further? No. Mrs. Carling obviously never reached Alora. What do you mean, never reached the law? Chief Bull said she wasn't registered here any longer. He misunderstood. When I said she wasn't registered here, I meant ever. Well, if she never reached here, where do you start? Back in London, I suppose. At first I'll see the manager of the Alora Mill and show this photograph round to be sure. Floor's high. This is a magnificent mill, Mr. Thank you. Here, come into my office. As I was saying, Mrs. Carling had talked about a contract with our mill, but she never made an appointment. And certainly never came to the mill. I see. Uh, this is a photograph of her. Wait. Yes. Yes, I saw that lady about town last week sometime, but I didn't know it was Mrs. Carling. She was in Elora. I had no idea Mrs. Waverley was really Mrs. Carling until I saw her picture, Inspector. Why would she pay in advance for two weeks and register under a false name? Maybe something in her room here will tell us, Constable. Perhaps, if we could find her husband. I don't think so. He died six months ago. That's quite impossible. He was here last week. Mr. Carling was here? Yes. At least I assumed it was her husband. He stayed with her here. She called him Alex. Hmm. Oh. Maybe things make a little more sense now. You know, it's quite possible her business trip was staged so she could meet with someone far from London's prying eyes. 
Society dictates a suitable period of mourning for a widow, but she may have met someone before it was socially acceptable. Quentin! Uh, excuse me, Constable. Daniel asked me to fetch you. I think your search party has located something in the gorge. Now, she's been dead at least a week. She must have fallen over the cliff from the trail above. Was the body covered in any way when you found it? Well, just by those branches that probably broke off when she came down through the trees. Oh, it's Mrs. Carling, all right. Dressed in her finest. Hello. What's this in her hand? Well, it's just part of a, a lilac bush. Well, let's get back up to the top of the gorge and see if we can find where she went over. Well, that's easy enough. Up there is Lover's Leap. Named for the legend of an Indian maiden who threw herself to her death after her brave died in battle. Really? Well, I sincerely doubt this was a reenactment. Abby, let's bring along one of the victim's shoes. There's our lilac bush. Just over the edge, meaning this wasn't a leap of suicide. Oh, well, she uh, tried to save herself by grabbing the bush. That's right. Has it rained in the last week here, Constable? No. Nope. Drier than tinder. Let me see your shoe. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see, it fits. This is where she was standing. Walked through the dried mud. Another boot print, judging from the size of man's. And over here, a scuffle, so... They walked down here, stopped, she paced, moved on and joined him as he drew her towards the ledge. I can almost see it. Poor woman. First the trust, then the inevitable shock of his betrayal, and finally his intentions. It's such a beautiful evening, Alex. Yes, quite impressive. But, as magnificent as it is, it hardly holds a candle to your fair countenance, Mary Carling. <laughs> you scallywag. You know how to turn a lady's head. And you brought me such a long way, Doctor. Such a long way after Niles' death. I do what I can to alleviate tragedy, my dear. Uh, though it pains me to bring it up now, I must know soon. Can you find it in your heart to invest another small sum in my venture? Five thousand more would ensure its success and deliver an excellent return for you. I... I don't know, Alex. My solicitor feels... Solicitor? What solicitor? My God, woman, this was between us! Between lovers who care and trust for each other. What solicitor? Don't be upset. It's my cousin. I showed him a record of the, the investments, and he felt I should stop. I... I'm sorry. Who is he? Jimmy Dick, my cousin. He promised he would keep confidence. He would just like to talk to you. Talk to me? Talk to me? Has he been to the police? Has he... Tell me! Of course not. Why would he go to the police? Alex, stop this. You're scaring me. You're just like all the others. You betrayed me, my trust. You took my help, and now you want to have me, what, examined? Like some bug under a microscope? No, Alex, not at all. What's come over you? Oh. Oh. Oh, nothing. I'm so sorry, my dear. The, the disappointment, that's all. C come. Uh, I must think. You, you must understand. I'm also a businesswoman. Of course, of course, of course. And this solicitor, uh, he's in London? Yes. Perhaps we could see him together. After all, I have invested almost $10,000 in your invention, and and I haven't even seen it. I'd be delighted to meet with Mr. Dick, his witness. But right now, let's enjoy the sunset. Come, come closer. Are you all right, Alex? You're so pale. Mm. I'm fine, my dear, fine. I was just surprised that anyone knew about us. After all, you are still in mourning. Your, your reputation. <laughs> so you're thinking of me again? Always, my love. Always thinking of you. Come over here and sit down there. 
how the sunset sparkled and softened the majestic power of the Grand River. It's lovely. It's so... Alex, let go. What are you doing? Nature is so true, so constant, so worthy of trust. Let me go. You're hurting me. Please, Not don't. like you. Not like all those women. No, I'll fall. Let me go. Alex, please go. No, no. That's better. Rest in peace, Mary Carling, and confess your sins of betrayal to your maker. You'll feel so much better, my dear. I know. I do. May I look now? Yes, yes. I preserved the poor woman's modesty. Her injuries are consistent with someone who has fallen almost a hundred feet onto the rocks. A severed rib pierced her heart like an arrow, killing her almost instantly. Quinton, it's always possible it was an accident. Then why wasn't it reported? What about the bruising? Of course, everywhere. But no way to specify any from an attack. And where is the man who purported to be her husband? Hmm. Something's up. Listen, while you clean up here, I'm going to have another look in her room. I can't believe she was lured here merely to be murdered. Something untoward, something unexpected must have triggered it. Now, what are you looking for? Clues, Wellington, clues. There must be something in her room. Wait, that's odd. What's odd? This valise. It was in that corner earlier today. Oh, well, I wouldn't know. I was tramping through the bush looking for bodies. Someone's been in this room. I asked Barnett to keep it locked. There's nothing in the valise. What's this? Something hard in a concealment compartment in the side. It looks like a diary. And something dropped out of it. Here, Inspector. A card. All right. Calling card. James Dick, barrister and solicitor, 70 Carling Street, London, Ontario. James Dick, James Dick. Why, oh, that's familiar. It's more like the late James Dick, if he's the same gent gunned down with that police constable. My God, Wellington, you're right. Can there be a connection? Uh, could be coincidence. Right. Surely a Satan serves ice cream. Let's see what the diary reveals, hmm? Oh, well, while you're reading, I'm going to go fetch a cup of coffee. Do you care for one? Yeah, order one for Abby, too. I'll meet you both in the dining room in about 20 minutes. Huh? Quinton, you look like you've seen a ghost. Worse. Do you remember me mentioning a man I chased halfway across Europe? Y yes, that doctor, Kuznetsov. Right. That cursed devil scandalized and victimized my sister and drove her to take her own life. I've been after him for years, and where does he turn up? In Mary's diary. And I'll wager he's around here somewhere. Here in Elora? Yes. The diary identifies him as the man Mary Carling thought would be her next husband. Instead, he's been swindling her, and I'm sure ended her life. Abby, do you remember on the train when Brown said that he overheard that man demanding her money back? Yes, uh, something about he'd seen amounts in her diary. Yes, the man was James Dick. The man Kuznetsov shot. And Dick is, was, Mary Carling's cousin and solicitor. Now, the diary lists five payments of $2,000 each to Kuznetsov for some investment. And then she made an entry saying she'd told her cousin and he ordered her to stop and that he wanted to see this doctor. You're saying Brown didn't kill those two men? That's right. It's Kuznetsov's murder operandi. He finds a well-to-do widow through the obituary column and as a doctor of psychiatry, befriends her and manipulates her for money. Then he casts her off and moves on. But this time, Mary must have told him that her solicitor was on his trail. He panicked, killed her, and then returned to London and arranged to meet James Dick in the park to sew up loose ends. But why would he come back here? Because before he killed him, Dick revealed the presence of the diary. Damning piece of evidence linking him to Mary. If he's around, he's come back for that diary. Now, where the devil is Barnett? What does he look like, Quentin? This town isn't that big, so we can all keep an eye out for him. Well, that's just it. I know he's short, swarthy, generally sports a small goatee, but in truth we've never met, nor have we managed to get a photo of him. I only know him by reputation and a trail of tragedy. Inspector! 
Glad I found you. If you'd like to question Mrs. Carling's companion, he's just gone upstairs. Why don't you let me take him, Inspector? No, he's mine. Of all the luck. I chase him around the world, and when I least expect it, he strolls in and walks within a hair's breadth of me. Oh, if he's as dangerous as you say, I'd better get the drop on him. No, you stay here. Like as not, he'll come quietly. After all, he's used to victimizing women. However, if he does pull something and gets me, give him a sporting chance, and then kill him. <laughs> Dr. Kuznetsov, I presume. Yes. Who the devil are you? Guess. You murdering bastard. Oh. That would make you Inspector Nichols, late of Scotland Yard. Inside. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Mary Carling. You know, Inspector, strange as it sounds, this almost comes as a relief. Finally, I can clear my name. Perhaps even persuade you that I am not the demon you take me for. Nice speech. Let's go. Of course. We are both gentlemen, and we'll act accordingly. So be a good chap, and uh, pass me my cane from the corner over there. What cane? God, I fell for it. Wellington, he's gone out the window! That carriage. He's headed for the gorge. Untie the steps. Oh, careful, Inspector. He'll throw you. Quinton, stop this nonsense. Get down. Untie him now. Your funeral. Horses really do hate you. Wellington, stop him. Come on. Get going, you nut. Come on. Abby, run upstairs and fetch me my Winchester while I try to find another horse. Hold it right there, Kuznetsov. Keep your hands where I can see them. Of course. Oh, put up the revolver, Inspector, and come over near the edge here. It's such a lovely view. <laughs> Sorry I left so abruptly, but I suddenly realized that you were not as interested in my innocence as much as in my extinction. Turn around. I'm getting off this nag and I... <laughs> my, 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 you are the clumsy policeman. No, stand up. Leave the gun there, or I'll shoot you like the tenacious cur you are. You'll not get away. Who will stop me? That fellow on the other side of the gorge? Is that your man, Wellington? <laughs> Rather clueless, isn't he? He's on the wrong side of the canyon to save you. Doctor, I'll say this once. You are responsible for the death of my sister, for Mary Carling, and God knows how many others... And you shall be brought to justice. And you, sir, are now going to die. <laughs> the fools! Yeah. One bank in the side pocket, I believe. Well, allow me to thank you again, Wellington. That was an excellent shot. Four hundred yards of an inch. With a bit of luck thrown in, eh? Well, luck helps, Inspector. Ah, uh, London City Hall. This place is packed. You Canadians sure get election fever real good. I found Chief Bull Quinton. He's on his way over. Oh, good. Come on, Kuznetsov. Ah, there he is, Chief Bull. So, Inspector, this is our alleged murderer. What have you to say for yourself, sir? Only that your inspector here suffers from delusions of grandeur and acute paranoia. I am innocent. Uh, wait, what's that? The, the floor is shaking. Quinton, look out! Something's happening! Abby? Abby? There you are. How are you? Oh. You've been working straight for 24 hours? Yes. Well, they are still bringing out injured and bodies. We have 21 dead so far and hundreds injured. A whole city hall floor just caved in. Mm hmm that Lady Luck was smiling on us. Yes, we were fortunate to escape with bumps and bruises. Did you find Kuznetsov? No, not a sign of him. He's not among the injured or the dead, as Luck would have it. He may very well be still in the rubble. No, Abby, he's gone. But I'll track him down. We saw Chief Bull. He says they'll be turning Brown loose. Good. Um, but now, Quentin, I have something to say. 
No, you don't have to thank me, Abby. No, I, no. I really, it's just a no. no. day's work. I'll be outside. Thank you, Daniel. Now, don't interrupt. This is vitally important. When you got on that horse and galloped off like some... some cowboy after Kuznetsov, I was deathly afraid I'd never see you alive again, and that made me realize something. Yes, Abby. Quinton, there is... That is... There comes a time when decorum must be put aside in the face of more important considerations. Uh, I understand completely. I trust that we can dispense with social niceties. You and I, you know, we, we enjoy a meeting of the minds that transcends all... Oh, such. I'm so glad you understand. You still owe me $20 for that train fare you borrowed. What? What? <laughs> 